chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to brighter the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hymn, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. The word masters here means teachers. James warned them that they were not to have many teachers among them. Why? Because of the tongue, the power of words. God's people ought to be taught by trained Bible teachers who know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Teachers who strive to master their tongue. Because even as trained teachers of God's word, in many things we offend all. We as trained teachers must master our tongue. It is not impossible. We can master our speech. He says that if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. The word perfect means he is a full-grown Christian. A full-grown Christian is able to bridle the whole body. In other words, if he can control his speech, he can control his entire body. David says this in Psalms 39 and, and verse 1. I will heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. We put a bit in the horse's mouth, knowing that if we can control its mouth, we can control its whole body. A rudder is very small in comparison with the size of a ship. And yet, by exerting pressure on that little rudder, the steersman can alter the course of the ship and direct it safely. The tongue is also small, yet it can direct the whole course of a man's life. The tongue is like a fire. When it is under control, it is a blessing. When it is out of control, it is devastating. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18 reads, There is that speak it like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. The tongue can be like a sword that kills, ruining friendships with gossip, ruining good names with lies, and so on. Or it can be health itself bringing edification to many lives the choice is ours what will it be hallelujah that's the question to ask ourselves all right let's look at verses 9 through 18 thou would bless we god even the father and thou would curse we men which are made after similitude the similitude of god and out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing my brethren these things ought not so to be do it a fountain send forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either a vine f figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter in envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Now, James is continuing his thought on being impartial. He makes it very clear that strife and envy does not originate with God. They are earthly, sensual, and devilish. An uncontrolled tongue produces envy and strife, which leads to confusion and every evil work. 
But we are not to walk in earthly wisdom, but in the wisdom that comes from above, which is pure, peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, to accomplish this, we must gain control of what we say. And the way to gain the control of what we say is by removing everything that is not like God from out of our heart. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks.